Hello, this is Rob Hirschfeld with a how to install Kubernetes from scratch using our Kubernetes Rebar Integrated Bootstrap or Crib. Uh, I'm going to walk through the whole process. So this video might get a little long, but bear with me because uh, it's going to make it easier to sort of follow all the documentation pieces and I'll pull them up as we go. Um, I will actually pause if there's something that takes a little bit of time so you don't have to watch everything, but uh, I can just tell jokes while, we, while we're in the middle of it. So let's get started. Uh, what I want to do is I'm going to create a server. I'm using Packet for this. Uh, Packet's a really good place to do this bare metal provisioning for demos and learning and training and things like that because it takes some of the uh, what does my network look like and do I have servers and it's actually pretty fast. So all good reasons to use Packet. And I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start with our training video. Uh, so I'm going to call my server training. I'm going to go ahead and do it in uh, Poughkeepsie. And I, I just need a tiny machine. So the T1s are perfect for this and I need Sense 7. So in this case, I've already added my SSH data. I'm going to deploy this server. So in this case, I have uh, got a server coming and boom, it's, it's going through the process. It's going to take a, a couple of seconds for it to, to get up and running. And I'm going to pause while we wait for the system to come up. So we're back uh, with the machine all the way created. So we're getting nice green lights. Let me pull up a terminal session. Here it is. I'm going to SSH into that machine. Remember, I've already put my keys in with Packet, so it's going to add me to the keys list. Yay! Pretty straightforward in this case. I have a machine called root at training. And what I want to do is I've, I've pulled up portal.rackend.io. Uh, which is an easy place to start and in this case it already brings up the quick start guides and all those pieces uh, right here for you and then you can literally jump through. Um, that's one place to do it. Another place to, to go is to go in and find our documentation, quick start guides right here, and I'm going to follow those steps. Uh, we do have some steps specifically for packet. Um, it's, it's pretty close to identical. Uh, in this case uh, I'm just cruising through the quick start guide. I'm at install. This would normally install the tip. So the step, sorry, the stable. I actually want the tip. So I'm going to sneak ahead, read the note, and say I want to read the tip install, which is excellent. And there's one other thing I'm going to do. Um, I'm going to take out the word isolated here. So isolated is really handy for your laptop. Uh, what I actually want to do is run it as a service. So I'm going to Put it, let it go into services mode. And uh, you'll see I didn't actually copy everything correctly. So what I do want to do is I'm going to make the directory first. So, um, and then I'll go into DRP. Not necessary, this is really a throwaway machine, but I'm trying to follow the instructions. Take out isolated. And it's going to run through the process. You're welcome to read the script. Um, uh, the, the shell script, it's really just bringing down, it's installing the prereqs, it's bringing the go binary, um, pretty straightforward stuff. Um, of course, it's a throwaway machine, so eh, maybe you don't care. So in this, uh, we're going to set up the server. We're also going to set up DRP CLI, uh, which is the command line piece. Uh, in some cases, you might want this on your laptop, on your, your local machine. Uh, I have it on my local machine. If I start a new uh, browser session over here, change the terminal colors just so it, we can easily tell them apart. Uh, there's my green one. So I already have DR, DRP CLI running. Um, oops, I think I just need not that dash dash this version. Um, I'm a little out of date on my version. This is going to install 3.10 plus. Um, the APIs are super stable, so old CLIs typically work, but easy enough to, to grab a new version of the CLI that's in the docs. Strongly recommend that because some of the bundling work, um, you want to be able to run the CLI locally, and we're going we're gonna to show that and talk about it in just a minute. Um, so the install is complete. Uh, what I need to do is actually start it running, so it gives me an instruction to do that. There we go. And uh, then I'm going to enable it to on reboot, even better. So now we're, we're really ra rocking and rolling. And now I, I want to install some operating systems. Um, for, for the crib demo, we actually only need Sledgehammer. Uh, Sledgehammer is our discovery and memory boot process. 
I added an ampersand so it'll run in the background. Uh, Sledgehammer is super lightweight. It's uh, sort of like CoreOS, except it's a real operating system based on CentOS. Uh, so you can still log in and has our agent baked into it and other tools that are necessary. Um, and so it's sort of a core part of the digital rebar workflows and processes and things like that. If I wanted to also say install the CentOS, I could bring CentOS into my system uh, and run it. Now you'll notice in this command it's saying DRP CLI, so it's, we've installed the CLI, and it's saying bootems upload the ISO for Sledgehammer. Uh, and before I click OK on this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back. Here's my packet server. There's my IP address. I'm going to come back to the portal and I'm going to put in the IP address here. Uh, I haven't changed the password, so rocket skates and defaults, I can. that looks good. This is going to happen every single time you bring up a new system. We, we generated a self-signed cert, so I have to accept the self-signed cert. Yay, which I'll do. Probably should have just started there, because that brings me to the exact same place. And I log in, and I have a blank digital rebar provision system. What what I'm doing right now in the background at the command line is there's a whole bunch of boot environments or boot M's and you'll see all these red X's because we haven't installed the matching systems. What that command is going to do is it's going to look up the boot M that I provide it. In this case we've already done Sledgehammer. Let's see. Sledgehammer is right here um, and it's uploading it. As soon as I've up gotten the right sledgehammer uploaded, discovery and sledgehammer will come back in. You go to 20 per page. And then um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to update CentOS. So it's going to literally look up the ISO, it's going to go to the download location, pull it down, upload it for you. So there's a DRP CLI command that does all those things in the background. Um, and we're just waiting for those other processes to finish. And they'll, once they're done, they'll, they'll be all set. Um, but they're background paths, so I don't have to waste time waiting uh, while they're happening. We'll see it. We'll see it go through the process itself. I'm going to jump back to the info page, and you'll see we have this wizard that helps me identify what things need to get uh, done in what order. Um, I, in packet, I don't need subnets because I'm not turning on DHCP, so that can just stay xed. Uh, but I do need some workflows, uh, and I need some preferences and machines. So we'll go through the work. Uh, we'll jump over to workflows. It's telling me I don't have any, so I have to add one. Discover is the minimum, so we'll come in. We'll create a workflow called Discover. Yay, there we go. Um, and I could call it anything. I actually like calling it the Announce, which is this bullhorn, uh, and call it, making it green. But, uh, all right. So, whoops, and I think I just called it Disco. Disco is fine. We'll run with that. Um, and Disco right now doesn't have any stages, so I need at least um, the Discover stage. Uh, and I don't have access to that yet because it's grayed out, so it's red. The reason it's red, it'll tell me, Discover wants Bootem Sledgehammer, which is not available. So the uh, system is actually able to see where the dependencies are, and in this case we're just waiting for, now we actually do care, uh, that that boot environment is not present. Uh, let's see. Let's see if we can set our preferences. Uh, nope, we don't have, so we're not going to be able to set those things until we've got all the working boot M's, uh, which shouldn't take too much longer, but it could be that, um, here we go. Uh, actually, Strangely, it looks like CentOS finished first. Uh, which is surprising to me. Usually, um, Sledgehammer is the smaller thing. So let's see what's going on. Do a little troubleshooting. It's always fun in a video so you can see how we look at the system. So if I go to Sledgehammer here, um, I can go ahead and download it myself. So this is going to sound a little funny. I'm, um, this is coming to my client instead of packet, um, which is perfectly legitimate uh, from that perspective. Uh, I have a pretty fast internet connection, so it's going to pull the uh, correct sources. And I can literally upload it by going into boot ISOs. 
clicking upload and making it happen. But in this case, it looks like it's there and I'm just being impatient. That's exactly what's happened, which is all fine. So now if I go back to bootems, you'll see all those blue checks mean that it's there. We haven't installed Ubuntu. And now if we go into our workflows, we're going to see I have Discover, which I want. That's very handy. And uh, then I want it to go to Sledgehammer Wait. That looks pretty good. That's some, the most basic workflow that you can do. Uh, it's also handy to include SSH access into this. To do that, you need to install your keys in the system. And there is a packet cheat, since if we're using packet, which we are, um, that has packet SSH, which brings in the packet SSH keys. You'll notice it's not an available stage forming. Uh, so let's fix that problem before we go anywhere else. So for that, I'm going to go into my plugins. I'm going to take the packet IPMI. So to, if you don't see this on the list, I believe it's one of the defaults, but you might have to go to the catalog and pick it. Uh, so if you pick it for the catalog, you'll be able to transfer it. Uh, so I need this um, in packet. You, it's, you don't have to, but it's super handy to have the packet out of band management plugin. Uh, and while we're here, I also need to have the uh, certs plugin, so I'm going to go ahead and, and pull that. You can also uh, click upload. If you have the binaries, you can just upload them directly and you don't have to be using the racking catalog or you could use DRP CLI plugins upload and upload them that way too. Uh, that is a fine way to do it. I don't know why this is a little bit slow. So I will let it uh, digest for a minute. Notice you're going to find out what version you're running. In this case, we're version 10 plus tip a little bit. Uh, the UX just rev to 141. Let's see. So while I wait for the, this is going to continue in the background. If I jump over to info, I guess I lost my login. I'm just hitting refresh. Let's see what's going on. Yep, lost my login for some reason. And so now I can go and I can say, if you don't know what to, who the machine is, go pick unknown. My, lo my default boot env is uh, Sledgehammer. Default stave is, is uh, Discover. Default workflow is Discover, or Disco in this case. Um, a little Aretha Franklin homage there, maybe. It's up to you. Uh, and so what we've, what we've got going in, in this is... Um, now the system knows what to do if it finds a machine it doesn't know what to do with. Usually we're going to go all the way to workflow and apply the workflow first and then it'll pick up the stage and boot down. If you have choices about how, you, if you, as you gra gradually understand digital rebar better, you could actually make different decisions here depending on what you want to do. And you do need to click save, which is always useful. It says, hey, I'm done with workflows, I'm done with preferences. Uh, let's go back to my workflows. Because I brought in the packet plugin, I should now have a packet dis uh, SSH of keys and a packet discover. So what I really want is packet discover. So in this case, I'm going to go regular discover, which brings up sledgehammer, then packet discover, which is going to find out the machine's API keys and uh, SSH access, and then I'm just going to wait. So standard way to bring a machine into the system. It's all really good. What I, what I need to do to really make the packet plugin work, though, is I need to take the provider, which I uploaded, and then uh, actually set create a plugin for it. And the reason these are different is the provider is the code that actually runs in the background. The plugin is actually the, the connection that enables that. So you could have the same code running multiple packet, multiple plugins. And the reason that's important is because I can have different API string keys. So in this case, I am going to copy in my API string. Woo. Um, I'm going to bring in my, my project ID, which is up here. That's excellent. Good sound effects. And I'm going to say, don't worry about importing existing machines. If you do this, it's literally going to go to Packets API and pull in every machine that you already have in that project, uh, and, which is fine. But, and then I could do things. I could set other values in here, too. I'm not going to worry about saving any of this stuff. So now if I look at my packet IPMI, what I've got is uh, my key and my project ID. And I could actually create machines all by myself, which is super easy to do from the plugin. Uh, so if I wanted to, 
I could uh, just create some machines called cluster. Let's create three machines. Uh, yep, we'll do that. In EWR, bare metal zero is that the tiny. If I say go here, uh, the system is going to go ahead, talk to packet, request the machines, and they're going to come up in the background. Um, so over here, I should start seeing uh, the cluster machines. Look at that. Cluster one, zero, and two. Uh, just coming in automatically. Uh, and so this is going to work because uh, I have the discovery action set. So make sure you set the discovery action so the machines are going to go through a process. Um, what you'll notice in this case is that they've already, um, as soon as they talk to the API, they're going to get IP addresses. They haven't been fully booted from Packet yet. We already know where they are and what they're doing. If I was going to do the same thing with Packet and say make a cluster for machine, this is what that would look like. Uh, hold on a second. Let me make sure I get the full names. Uh, they're going to show up as without full names. Okay. So if I say cluster uh, dash three, EWR, same location, T1 small. In this case, I have to say custom IPixie. I have to provide my IP address for this cluster, which is here. And it's a little bit tricky to. So I want to explain this. We have several videos of this. So it's HTTP, because we're talking about iPixie, on a different port. So this is not the API port. This is our HTTP port, Digital Rebirth HTTP port. And I have to tell it, start with default.ipixie. Or is it lpixie? Let me see. So if I look at these machines, what you'll find is they have a whole bunch of packet information set now. Uh, and if I wanted to, I could just copy the, the Pixie booter script, which is probably a smart thing to do. So I'll do that instead. And then one thing that I always forget, but I, you need to remember, is to persist the Pixie reboots. Uh, very important. Uh, if you just let Rebar create the servers for you, and it'll delete them when you delete them, it'll delete them, then all that's done for you, and it's pretty straightforward. But this process, because it's booting to digital rebar, will actually discover the machine and will collect all the information. So there's two different ways to add machines into your cluster. There's tons of ways. These are the one manual and one what I consider automatic. Um, and so what you'll see is, in this case, we don't get that fourth, that third machine until it's gone through the full process. But it's going to go through the exact same process and we'll be able to control it. Whew. All right, so now we have a cluster. We are pretty much done with what's in the quick start. Uh, let's see where our wizard thinks we are. It thinks we're done. So that's all excellent. The thing that we're missing in this case is crib, which is the Kubernetes rebar integrated boot workflows. So, uh, right, because all, all I have is the workflows that I've added. So now I need to get that. The simple way to get that is to go into content packages. Uh, let's see, I always like to bring in our task library because there's a ton of good things in that. And then here's crib, it's content library for, um, and you could choose uh, whatever version. So we just have, we have a 10.1 version. We could bring in tip, which would have some of the latest changes. Uh, I'm just going to get 10, 1, 10, 10, 1. It's good enough for the demo. And poof, uh, it's getting transferred in. So what this is going to do is bring in all of the, uh, parameters, stages, bootems, tasks, uh, templates that go with installing crib, which is the same as digital rebar provision content crib over here. Uh, this is this is that content. And even the documentation, documentation is baked right into those content libraries. So if you want to extend the documentation or add things, they are right there. Um, and what we've done is each Oh, this one, of course, doesn't have it as an example, but um, we actually have the documentation for each stage in the, the documentation, and then this gets automatically generated. So if I go into, uh, let's see, find crib here, what you'll find is there's a integration for crib, and this is literally that documentation that I was just showing you. So uh, if you find places where we need details, find the thing that needs more details and add add to the documentation block and it's going to build up 
all of this. All of our content has this capability and we've been moving to generate more and more of it along the way, which is super handy because that means when you look at parameters and you're like, oh boy, what, what does cluster API VIP port do? Uh, in this case, it's gonna give you some data straight out of that field and you can just go to the field itself. Let's see. So I can go to the params field and find the parameter that I think has not enough information on it. And I could do a pull request to extend the documentation right here. So very narrowly add documentation into each section of this so that the whole system gets better. Um, it's, it's part of what we're trying to do with Digital Rebar to make much more self-documenting and easy to maintain documentation. All right, so crib is installed. If I wanted to do the same thing over here from my command line, I could go into digital rebar provision content. Yay. And then I can go to crib. That's great. I can get my latest. So I already have it checked out. Wow, somebody's been busy. And from here, if I say DRP CLI contents bundle, uh, crib.yaml it's going to take all of that stuff and uh, put it into a YAML file uh, let's see and this is showing me that that YAML file is not right because we're oh we're just I just tailed it um, sorry I should have left it so now if I uh, scroll down this is this is basically everything in git in a single file which we call bundle, which is awesome. And then if I was to set my endpoint, I'm showing you this because I hope that you will actually add, extend, extend, change, fix, crib. So it's useful to know how to be able to do this. So uh, I've already cloned it, so you don't need to see how to do that. But what I do want to do is I want to come in and take my system right here. I'm going to export. I can do this from the command line too, but it's handy to do this uh, from the uh, parameters. My endpoint equals HTTPS. There's my endpoint ID. So when I do that, and I can say DRPCLI uh, machines list, and I'm going to cheat and make it formatted pretty. Um, now this is actually my whole cluster. And so what you'll notice is um, this is this cluster three is packet added some uh, components into the name when it built the cluster, which we didn't do with uh, cluster the other three machines. It's not a problem. Um, so that is now I can actually access the system. If I change the password, I need to uh, export ours endpoint key um, like this. I'm just using defaults, which it, which it knows. So key, uh, rocket skates, and then uh, let's see, R-O-C-K-E-T, rocket, S-K-8-T-S, like that. Um, nope, I did it wrong. Um, uh, I don't know. Oh, maybe I'd like this. I need to look up the default password. Yay, I'm just gonna unset it for now. <laughs> so I can keep going. But what I would do, so now if I um, take my system and I wanna take that YAML file I just built, I can say DRPCLI, contents, um, upload, crib. And that is literally gonna take this latest change and push it up into my endpoint. Let me show you what that looks like. So here, if I go back to content packages, hit refresh because I changed it, it's going to tell me unspecified version here, and I could actually hit diff, and it'll tell me what changed in that, uh, in that cluster. Uh, it looks like we removed a fair bit of stuff. So what I want to do is I'm going to go backwards, and I'm going to uh, upgrade it back to 110. So it's literally going back to the rack and sass and pulling in the new version and now I'm back to where I was. You can move backwards and forwards like this. Um, Rebar is designed to, to handle uh, those types of changes. So let's get moving into the Kubernetes cluster install because I know you're excited about that. 
In this case, uh, Crib brought in some read-only workflows, uh, and I can't edit these, so if I try and change them, it's not going to let me because they're, they're locked read-only, like all the other Crib components that come in through the bundle. And, but if I want to make a change to it, I can clone it. Uh, I'm just going to call this Rob's. We're going to make it uh, purple, so make it easy to find. Keep it as a ship. Okay, so now if I go back to my workflows, you'll see here's Rob's. And I could change this one, and I could make some modifications to it. So for example, I could say, you know what, I don't want to run Helm at the end of my install process. Uh, and this one actually would install CentOS. Uh, so you have some options. So Live Cluster is going to be the Sledgehammer one. Live Cluster is going to run CentOS, so you have to have the CentOS boot, boot M. This would be this would indicate if uh, it couldn't run it, it would give you an error message in the stages at least. Um, so you have a couple of options, like we have a drain, we have an uncordon, and we have a reset, uh, which I will show you how to use. Uh, in this case, we're just going to use the existing Crib Cluster uh, workflows. To make all that stuff work, I need a profile. So all clustering in Digital Rebar uses this cluster pattern, which is in the docs. Uh, if you're interested, I, I highly recommend uh, reading it. It's actually linked from the Crib documentation, which is really cool. Uh, oh, and other videos, this video will end up in here. So what, I'm, what I want to do is I want to take this example HA Crib. I'm going to clone that, and I'm going to create my own crib uh, de uh, demo. I'm going to call it demo. And so to make this work, what I have to do is I have to name the cluster profile to match the name of the profile, which seems a little redundant. It has to do with the way profiles and parameters are exposed to machines. So when a machine operates, it's going it doesn't know what profiles it has, uh, but it does know what parameters it has. And so these two parameters are going to show up and then it can push data back into the profile if it knows what profile to push it into. Um, it gets an access token and some things like that. We have, we have some special behaviors uh, for digital rebar built around this. I'm going to make this green so it's easier to find, keep it as a ship. So now I've created this demo uh, profile that only has these two pieces of information in it. Now if I wanted, I could go in and I could add all sorts of crib master strings, versions, um, I could, you know, also, there's all sorts of things that we could do. I'm not too worried about that right now, we're just running the basics. Um, and, oh, let's see, okay, all that's good. So that's excellent. Now I've got some machines. Um, okay, I'm a little worried that my name, my name differences are going to show up in weird ways, but we'll, fi we'll figure that out as we go. Um, so what I have to do is I have to put that profile on all the machines. Um, bulk actions, which does require you to have a rack and login. It's a it's a it's a free screen, but it's um, it requires the reg wall. Um, but makes these you can do everything I'm showing you with with just the command line if you want, um, or just the machines. It just isn't quite as fast. So what I need to do is put all the machines into my profile. So in this case, I've got these four cluster machines. They are all in sledgehammer weight, so they're ready to go. And the, they are now, they have packet profile and they have my demo profile. And to start the process, uh, what I have to do, and remember this is in the docs, so you can go look at the crib docs and it'll walk you through these same, the same, same actions. All I have to do is come over here and say, I want to run a crib live cluster. The crowd's hovering over behind my laptop, to, my, my desktop to see this. So here's the crib live cluster workflow. I'm going to start that workflow, and it's going to go. So this uh, goes. This workflow goes through mounting the disks because we're in a live boot system, and then it's going to install Docker, which takes a little bit of time, and then it's going to install the Kubernetes components, just you know, yum install type thing. Uh, then it's going to install etcd. It's going to go through a, a leader election process. Then it's going to run kubeadm. And we can watch all those processes go. Uh, you get live updates in the UX as it's, as it's doing this work. If you want, you can um, jump into individual actions here and see um, live data. So if you click these buttons, you're going to get live information. Um, and yep, one of the, there's a feature coming in the UX where it actually shows you um, 
a template that is being executed also, which is super fun. Um, uh, I can show that actually if I go to the tip UX. Yeah, 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 log me in. Um, so in this case, I can close that and then I can actually look at the template that's being rendered. This is really handy diagnostic tools so that if you are modifying things you can see exactly what's going on um, in, in the system. So this is basically what's sent to the runner to be executed and then I can go back and look at the job template and see this is the log data um, of actions that are being taken. Let's see. Just waiting for more data to come back on the log. Whoops, there it is. I clicked on the wrong thing, sorry. Yeah, this job's about to finish. Um, oh, this is a slow step, is what I'm what I'm what I'm figuring out. Yep. Alright, so We are going to, yep, we've been moving on. You can see Docker installs, bulk actions. I'm really just stalling here because, oops, I haven't logged in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Excellent. Back to uh, let's see the other benefit I should see. Training cluster. Thank you. Let's see how my machines are doing. Yay. All right. Uh, and so the system's going through the process. Cluster 3, um, interestingly, looks like it had some type of a problem in Etsy config. Yep. So we're getting failed. This is what I was worried about. Um, the name of the machine is, is causing me problems. So I can come in here, cluster 3, fix the name. Woo -hoo. So I'm going to save that change, and with a little bit of luck, it'll be able to just pick up and fix it. Nope. So in this, so we've we've wedged ourselves just that the machines came in through two different naming patterns, and so it's it's confused. Um, not to worry. It's actually useful to be able to show how to how to clean things up in this case. Uh, what I want to do is I'm going to put it through the cluster reset process. So hold on, we're going to stop. I'm going to make everything paused. That's excellent. So what's what's happened is we've been accumulating some data in here, um, and also we've been building up some certificate data. So if I go into profiles here, um, oh. Looks like I didn't install the certificate plugin. No wonder it's not working. And you're probably like, Rob, you didn't install the certificate plugin. The system needs the certificate generator because it's an HA, it can build HA clusters, so we can't rely on kubeadm to install the certificates. Um, so it wasn't the naming of the machines at all. It was the fact that I couldn't do the certificates. If I'd read the, the job log, it would have told me exactly that. So let's see if we can uh, come back and just pick up where we were going without any reboots. Go. We'll let the systems uh, continue. So what's going on right now is we're just building the etcd cluster. Cluster 3 here got elected to be the leader. That's why it got the anchor. Um, and now it's going through kube config. So look at that. I actually recovered just by adding the missing piece uh, from the job logs and was able to continue. Awesome. If you'd been reading the documentation for Crib, it would have told you to do the certain install. Challenge it, doing it from memory. Um, and so it's literally just running and um, starting the process. So this is the master node. It's running kubeadm to get the token. And once it's finished with that, it will have, it'll have the data it needs to, um, to continue and release the other machines. And you will see that happen. Uh, one of the things that you can also watch is you'll, you'll see your, this profile, the demo profile, keeps getting more and more stuff in it. So as the workflow is run, it pushes data for the cluster back into this profile. Uh, these get live updates, just like everything else, so you can get um, 
you can actually watch the live update scroll as things change. You can subscribe to this. It's just a WebSocket. Uh, if you want external, uh, even the CLI can be can monitor uh, different different systems and get get live events. Um, but what this thing is going to do is it's going to show me um, different passwords. It's going to have my keys. The certificates that I generate are actually going to be stored up here. Um, so these are the certificates with private keys. Um, and Digital Rebar does support encrypted parameters, so you can definitely store this data in a secure way. Um, it's not the way we're setting it up by default, but it's very easy to, to switch to secure parameters. Um, so the system's literally just going through. Crib config is where it's actually doing the um, uh, leader election. So in this case, it's it's done all the kube ADM, and now it's waiting for the master to tell it, tell that it's ready, and it'll start adding machines. If I come back over here, it reached um, <laughs> reached a finish point. The other machines all released, uh, so they did their Kubernetes, they got the token, and they installed. They are done, and we are now at a point where we're doing the extra stuff. So if I look at the crib stage, um, after I figure out the leaders, I can go to the crib config task, and in the crib config task, um, it actually does additional steps. It's, then it's going to run Helm after that. And then if you like seeing cool, interesting graphs, um, we also, uh, the tasks have a statistical analysis that shows you, or at least a graph that shows you the time it takes to do things. And as workflows complete, uh, there's a similar graph under workflows, but it only does completed workflows. Um, let's see. So uh, we might be able to see a couple of workflows. No, it's got, there has to be two, I think, for it to, to do the math correctly on, on workflow as alignment. Um, but that's pretty much it. Oh, and I should show you how to actually get to the cluster. It's always useful to do that. Um, everything's done, by the way. This is all greens. Everything's tasks complete. We are in a finished state. You can access the cluster before that. Um, it basically, the system's going to push back in this admin comp file. And you can uh, click here, and it will download it for you. Uh, that's not the way I prefer to do it. What I prefer to do is uh, DRP CLI. Uh, let's see. So what I want, I need to do is get this profile. So it's profiles uh, show. Wait, DRP CLI profiles. I want to get a parameter. So params. Uh, let's see. Profiles params demo. Uh, this was all of them. I don't want all of them. What I want is this one that has the admin comp file in it. So let me just ask for that one. Copy. Uh, let's see. Oh, params. I guess I have to say get. Nope. Let's see what params actually expects. DRP CLI. Profiles, params, ID, I think I did not do this correctly. So if I want to get the profiles, params, uh, let's see, ID, Jason, this is not the right command for this. This is the right command. Uh, get a parameter from a profile. Get. And so get ID param key. That looks better. Get demo param. There is my admin file. Not very useful like that. So I'm going to pipe it into admin.conf. That's handy. Then I can export. Uh, kube config equals admin.conf. Then I can say kube cuddle uh, nodes, I'm sorry, get nodes. And that will get the nodes in my machine. So this is all of the, the three machines that I've, the four machines in my cluster. And I can start taking action on them. Um, I can do, Helm's already installed for me. 
there's a special privilege group for Tiller. So uh, pretty much that's it. I'm, I'm talking a lot for a, a Kubernetes cluster that only takes uh, four minutes to spin up. Uh, and there's other videos that sort of break this into other pieces. Hopefully this one's, this one's useful from, from how things go. Uh, what if I'm, if I'm done and I want to destroy this cluster, because I want to try it again, what I want to do is I need to go in here, say cluster reset. I could do it on all nodes. I only have to do it on one. This is going to wipe out those parameters. So if I come over here, you'll notice the parameters are, are now everything that I had in the cluster is gone. And um, my certificates have also been purged and destroyed. So it's a pretty powerful um, stage. <laughs> you don't want to run it by accident. That's why it's red. And then all I have to do to do a reset of the system is I'm going to... Um, Actually, I don't even have to do that. So I can go back and I can just tell it. Um, oh, I have, since I'm still in Sledgehammer, I have to tell it to reboot. If I had gone back into a regular operating system and I set it back to Sledgehammer, it's going to automatically reboot and go through the process. In this case, because I'm still in Sledgehammer, it doesn't think I'm rebooting. So I have to reboot. Um, and this is just going to tell all the machines in Packet to uh, go ahead and reboot. I think their API will tell me that they're rebooting, but I'm not sure. Um, no, probably not. So uh, this is building my, my cluster up, and I'm, I'm pretty well set. So to, once these machines reboot, it um, takes about a minute for the, the T1s to reboot. They're pretty fast like that. All I have to do to start a new process is to um, go back to live cluster. It's entirely possible. For me to build, uh, I've done this in a couple of other, I think some other videos, you could actually build the discover, you could take discover and you take live cluster, you just take these same tasks and put them in this uh, workflow and then when the machine's discovered, they're going to automatically go straight back into, they're going to straight build a Kubernetes cluster. Super handy. Um, the Terraform demo, so under integrations, crib, there is a Terraform build cluster, uh, and it actually builds a full discover, packet discover, goes all the way through the crib live wait. This one uh, needs to get updated to include Helm, which it doesn't. Um, and this, you can just say, if you have a, a digital rebar provision machine running, and you say Terraform plan with this, without any modifications, um, it will build a four machine cluster um, and run it through and that takes under seven minutes and you can say plan destroy and it'll tear it all down. Um, so in this case here, we probably have all the machines back. Yeah, you can see they're literally bouncing back through sledgehammer wait as we see. So you get real feedback that the systems are back and ready. Over here, uh, crib live. If I say crib um, uh, install cluster, it would install CentOS. It's just a little bit slower. Um, and you, of course, can do it with Ubuntu, too. We're not, we're not, um, oops, I didn't want this, this go only live cluster. And it's going to go through the process all over again uh, for about four minutes. So let's see, grid live cluster. Yeah, there we go. So um, now the live cluster has data, uh, some data, and we actually can see uh, that's the first pass where it failed. Or it's failing with mount local disks right now. No, I don't think so. Uh, no, it passed that the first time. Oh, uh, we must have run through some problem step. But, uh, or it was in the middle of doing that, which would be why it was red and negative. That would be, make more sense. Um, so Docker install. The Docker install task is, is pretty darn slow. We have three, ah, yeah, these are, the red ones are just in process. That's all it's showing me. It's about 90 seconds to install Docker. It's the longest stage in this. Um, and then when I'm done, uh, what I can do literally is I can say, you know what, I, I never liked that machine anyway. I'm going to remove it. If I do that and we delete it, uh, Packet is going to, it's going to tell Packet's API to remove it. So um, at some point, <laughs> That cluster three machine should go away. Uh, oh, no, it, it won't because I, I didn't create it through the API, so it's not fully registered. That was the wrong one to pick. Uh, I pick cluster two and delete that one. We're going to have a much smaller cluster. 
there's cluster two is gone. So one of the values of um, adding the machines from within digital rebar is that uh, you also get the delete capability for the clusters. Uh, so you can literally build your training DRP, create and destroy machines um, just from digital rebar or from Terraform, and then it'll clean them up for you. It's pretty handy like that. Um, and now my little two machine cluster is busy. Uh, and you can just do a one machine cluster too, of course. That would be fine if you want to play. Uh, and I think that's it. I'm, I'm sort of stalling because I'm trying to show you all this other cool stuff that you can do, but I, that's it. I, there's, it's not that hard, right? Digital Rebar is easy to set up. Uh, crib is literally two clicks, and you're, you know, build, a, build a profile and then start the workflow, and you're done. Um, you know, the trickiest thing that you're going to need to learn how to do uh, if you want to really play is this get profiles demo and I actually intentionally did it slowly so you can see how you can read the command line um, help that's there and figure out how to pull things out yourself uh, so boy not that hard um, if you have questions of course we are happy happy to interact with you um, you can just get on our you know, get asked for an invitation to our slack channel um, and we will make sure that, that you can follow these steps. We'd love to get pull requests uh, for documentation, for changes, extensions, whatever you think. Uh, this is HA, so you can create multiple masters. Of course, that is more complex, so buyer beware as you do that. Uh, and if you need some real help with it, uh, Racken does provide support and services. So thank you very much. This is Rob Hirschfeld signing out.